这里啊，就是、你听 member 这个介绍这里对，麻烦你再介绍一下，我这个 recording 就不会 miss。哦、oh, ，OK， 好，好，啊，那就是我就就就就 introduce myself， 你要我 ？Yeah，OK，、okay, 好 ，Thank you， 好，我大家好，我叫我叫 Darren Chen， 嗯、um, ，I went to、uh, Birmingham High School in、uh, California and I graduated in 2019. I spent four years in the first program and、um, And I spent two years as the captain of my、uh, team. I now am a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania,、um, and、um, class of 2023, and I'll、um, in mechanical engineering. Just to introduce yourself. Yeah.、Um, hello, I'm Hubert Chen. I am a junior at Burlingame High School.、Uh, this is my third year in the first program, and on our team,、yeah, I am the robot driver and a mechanical member. Um, Olina, if you can introduce yourself. Um, hi, I'm Olina, and I'm、um, a junior at Burlingame High School.、Um, this is my second year and first, and I'm a business lead on the team. Yeah. And um, Aaron is not with us、uh, yet, but he is um a. I'll introduce him for himself. He's a.、Uh, he also is at Burlingame High School. Um, he is a junior. He spent three years in the first program. And he is a the current mechanical lead of the team. And、uh, how these robotics leagues work is that it's it's kind of like a sports league in the way that、um, different teams compete against each other to to win the championship. Except there's actually a, a new challenge every single year in which you have to you know redesign your robot to、uh, compete compete that challenge. So imagine like take the NBA for example. Except you know every year you're playing a different sport. That's pretty much what robotics is, and then you have to you know redo your team, redo your robot to to play、uh, that sport. So now the main differences between First and Vex is that First has a,、uh, a much greater global reach than Vex uh, currently. Um, first is in a, present in about 110 countries. Vex is around in 40 countries, and、um, but the biggest difference is. The biggest difference is that first,、uh, you're you're required to, you can use custom or Cox parts, which is commercial off-the-shelf parts,、um, which means like anything you can buy online, anything you can make yourself,、um, you're allowed to use、uh, to build your robot. Meanwhile, in Vex on the right is that you have you have to use a specific、uh, set of parts that they give you,、um, which you know some people might find limiting, some people might find is good, but. Uh, those are the two main differences、uh, between first and Vex. Now, if I went through that too quickly, I think、uh, the slides will be published later. I did first uh, for uh, four years. I'll, I, I know the first program、um, the best, and I'll explain to you what the first progression looks like. So.、Um, First has it. They they do four different robotics league all the way from kindergarten up to twelfth grade, which is the、uh, senior year before you go to college. It first starts off with、um, first Lego League、uh, Junior, and then Lego League, and then Tech Challenge, and then first robotics competition, which is the thing that I the league that I participated in.、Um, I will go into depth about what each of these mean. So.、Um, First Lego League Junior and First Lego League is、uh, from K to eighth,、um, K through eighth grade for students from K to eighth grade, and、uh, they, like、um, all the other challenges, you have to,、um, you have to, you,、uh, you build a robot or you build a, you build some sort of contraption to compete、um, against the challenge that year, and again that changes every year. Um, but the main、Real、difference thing, here is yeah, that you actually you are、um, it is built using Lego. So、uh, this is something that you know most、uh, small children are familiar with. I started off building with Lego. I think it's really fun and it's a great way to introduce、um, uh, young young kids into the world of engineering because you know it's、um, very、uh, you can use your hands to build these contraptions and to compete. And there's also a big emphasis on presentation in which you know you take You and your team of maybe four or five other、uh, little students 
uh, take your um, your robot built using Legos up in front of a judge, and you have to explain to the judge how it works, and they um, they they judge you um, based on how you present, how well you can explain your robot, how well you can explain your team chemistry and things like that. And this is also a very you know useful uh, skill. Um, Okay, and then after you graduate from First Lego League, you go to First Tech Challenge, which is FTC, which is um, from sixth grade to twelfth grade. And then, so as you can see, the robots here on the right, they're actually made of metal now, and um, they're a lot bigger. And um, uh, that's you can build those uh, robots using uh, custom uh, custom machine parts, or you can uh, build it using kits. Um, if you're a beginning team, I would suggest using the kits because the kits are actually very easy to use and they are you know, just as good as machining your own parts or making your own parts. Um, and just like FLL and FLL Junior, there's a huge emphasis on presentation and outreach. Um, and what that is, is that uh, outreach is like, you have to go out into your community um, with your team and basically um, in inspire in some way, um, inspired in some way your community uh, about the um, the stem program um, I, I will go on uh, I'll go into explaining what outreach really means um, in a couple of slides so because uh, it's mainly a, a very FRC heavy thing as well and um, now we will move on to FRC so FRC first robotics competition is the league that I spent the most amount of time in in my time in high school and then this is from ninth, uh, from ninth to twelfth grade, and uh, this is built. Uh, you, these robots are built using kits or custom machine parts, um, a lot to, similar to FTC. And then uh, once again, there's a big um, emphasis on presentation and presentation and outreach, and. Um, so uh and also if you look to the right the picture you know the, that robot is a lot larger than say these broken um so that's you know, the difference um so as you can see here just a bell um there's my brother on the far right um and then there's our robot from this year as you can see it's pretty much, you know, it's a big robot. And then on the left here, that is the, actually, that's the championship, uh, which is final match has been played in a baseball stadium in, um, baseball stadium in Houston. Is there anywhere to clear these annotations? Um, or if- Gary, can I add something really fast? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, Gary has not told you about, like, the different levels of robotics, um, but one commonality between all the different levels, in my experience, is that um, working as a team is really important. So, as part of robotics, not only do you learn, like, the applied skills, like working in a lab or working with certain tools or machines, but I find that one of the most important takeaways at any level is learning how to work with a team. Um, so, I, you know, that's one of my biggest learnings and takeaways from robotics, and I think that's really valuable. Yes, um, I agree with Aaron. Um, but, uh, okay, now, so, yeah, let me explain the uh, the image on the left, which is, that's the uh, Houston World Championships, um, the finals matches. As you can see, there's a lot of people in attendance. Um, it's a almost filled baseball stadium in Houston, and just to, just to show you the scale of FRC, which is, you know, very large. Um, all right. So now I'm going to go into a, after hopefully that, um, you know, skim over of what the first uh, program represents. Uh, you found that helpful or clarifying. If it wasn't, then feel free to ask us questions at the um, end of the presentation. Uh, but now I'm going to go into a little bit how um, our team has developed over the years, which is um, uh, you know, I think a pretty inspiring story. I might be biased and say, you know, I'm on the team, but uh, here we go. So in, oh, wait. Why won't, here we are. Okay, so in our, our uh, we have a relatively young team, actually. Our team first started in 2013, 
um, in 2013, which is, you know, only uh, extremely easy. Your robots are extremely easy to build because you're given um, a kit to do so. As you can see, our robot on the right is, you know, not the best looking robot, um, not the biggest looking robot, right? But it's it works, which is, you know, what had, what had mattered back then. Um, so we had 30, around 30 students, uh, registered students, but in the end, we really only had about, you know, 20 or so active students. Uh, plus, what was really important is that we had two great mentors, and mentors are the adult leaders on the team, um, who basically are in charge of um, making sure that the students are, uh, you know, leading the team well, making sure that they are, um, making sure that they are uh, learning the you know the processes of engineering and making sure that the uh, the um the making sure that the uh, students are you know interacting well with each other um i will go into more depth about how uh, how mentors at least in our team and in frc works um later in a different slide okay so then um now 2000 the years 2014 2015 and 2016 were um a bit of like um were quite uneventful in my um, opinion since we were we were such a new team we were still gaining experience and we um, we did not we were not a very consistent team because of our inexperience and because of that we we built some extremely unreliable robots and we we considered it a success if uh, you know the match started and our robot moved on the field um, that's how that's how uh, that's how unreliable we were back then. Um, so we we transitioned from FTC into FRC, which was the uh, the bigger robots, because we decided that that was a more worthwhile um, league to participate in. Um, and our from 2014 to 2016, we our team grew to about 40 students, and our budget was around um, 20,000 US dollars a year, um, which for a FRC team um, is is uh is you know just about the right amount of money i think that's probably the the, the minimum budget you could have for a FR, uh, functioning frc team and um throughout these three years we, we we gained a lot of experience through repeated failure i think um we were always with within these three years we were consistently the um probably the bottom 10 percent of uh competing teams at a given tournament which you know um, is discouraging, but uh, it is discouraging. But your place in the bracket it doesn't uh, reflect how much you learned. And as you can see, we we learned a lot throughout these three years just through repeated failing. And then um, then in two thousand, so yeah, here we are. Um, sorry, here are some <laughs> pictures of our robots from uh, two thousand fifteen and two thousand sixteen. As you can see, they're quite large. A kind of messy um they and you know we, we tried our best uh but ultimately we learned a lot from building these uh unreliable beasts um and then in 2017 and 2018 came basically our our breakout seasons which we you know started to do uh, a lot better so in 2017 we started to gain traction um and we got uh a lot more confident in our ability to build robots because we had been building robots for around three years now and then in in so in 2017 which is the uh the picture on top that was our first time competing at world championships um we didn't do extremely well but hey you know we're at world championships that's already a major accomplishment and we were happy we were happy for that um and so basically what was happening is that our our experience um our experience through failure um, over the past three years began to translate into performance, um, which is why we were able to do uh, much better at world champ uh, na at qualifying tournaments and also at world championships. Um, we were able to, you know, be a a very average team at world championships, which is a, an accomplishment in and of itself. And then throughout these years, we also saw our budget increased from 20,000 to 40,000, 
which is, um, you know, which is, which is nice, which is, it's very nice because now we have a lot more money to uh, play with, to experiment with different materials, to um, make our organization better. And it's basically, you know, more, more money for a robotics team is, is always, is always good. Um, next are a couple of pictures from our 2017, 2018 um, years. On the uh, left is our 2018 robot. Um, as you can see, it's a lot cleaner um, than our previous robots. And also um, it, was, it, it performed very well at um, San Francisco, at the San Francisco tournament, which is uh, us at, um, which is um, on the, the picture on the right. Um, whoever is drawing on my slideshow, please do not do that. That would be nice. Um, okay. Now let's move on to um, 2000, uh, 2019. So 2019 was a huge year for us, obviously. Um, this is when we won world championships at Houston. And how we did that was through, um, we basically had, we. We had, got, we had gotten all the experience we needed to, you know, be, be successful. Um, a critical mass was obtained within the team, uh, team members on our team with, with around 30 or 40 team members. And then at this point, we were extremely confident in our skills and our, um, extremely confident in our skills and our abilities to, you know, lead a team and to build a robot. Um, so we used all of our past experience gained over the past six years, and we built uh, a robot, which you can see right there on the screen. And we won um, Houston World Championships as a second pick. And what a second pick means is we, how, how, um, how our, the robotics tournament works is that you're not actually competing, you know, one robot against one robot, you're actually competing three robots against three robots. Uh, so those, those three robots come from um, different teams from different schools. So in, in reality, um, when I say that we are, uh, when we won world championships, it doesn't mean that we are actually the best robot in the world. It just means that our, the combination of the three robots uh, that we were uh, partnered with, which is us and two other schools were uh, the best in the world. Um, and this, this is, um, you know, an important feature of the uh, the robotics program because it, it 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 tells people that you don't actually have to be the best robot or the best team in the world to win. You just have to be a very good, reliable, and compatible robot to win worlds, um, which is you know a lot more encouraging for teams like us who are just recently developed um, and you know only have our our reliability and our um, our reliability and our, you know, um, our good compatibility and strategizing to to show um, and not like a huge budget like some other teams have. Um, all right, now we can move on. Oh, here, we are. here are some pictures of us winning worlds. It's a very exciting time. Um, uh, I think the, the picture on the left was published in a newspaper and then the picture on the right um, is just us on the uh, field with our robot and our competition banner. Um, as I said before, can you please stop drawing on the slides? It's very distracting. Okay, let me try to stop that. Okay, okay. okay. okay please go ahead. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so the reasons for um, our success were there's actually a this is just my um, my understanding of our reasons for success. Obviously, there's probably a lot more to this, but um, these are the five that I think were the most important. And um, uh, the the most important, in my opinion, were one: we had a very supportive environment um, at our school. Um, we had a, a school woodworking shop, which was basically just a giant. Uh, a big laboratory where um, where we were able to build our robots and to machine our parts, and that was extremely helpful for us because it you know it gave us a centralized location for us to build our uh, build our robot. Um, I know uh, some other teams who just work out of like a parent's garage or out of a um, 
just out of even a physics classroom. And um, although this may not seem ideal, some of these teams are actually very good um, because it's not really about uh, what, um, it's not really about what physical environment you have, but it's more about what type of, you know, what type of environment you have in terms of support. And if the uh, physics classroom and the school can give you that amount of support, then it's really great um, for you. For example, for us, um, our the, the BHS, the Birmingham High School Parents Group, um, gave us a, I think a thirty or thirty thousand or twenty thousand dollar donation um, last year, which really helped us uh, move our team forward. Um, we also had extremely committed mentors and coaches. Um, the picture on the right is a picture of our mentors and coaches. So mentors and coaches are um, basically adult leaders on the team. Um, who are the supervisors uh, who supervise the um, students when they're building a robot. Um, and in my eyes, a, a committed, a, a good mentor and a good coach, what they do is, um, <clears throat> what they do is to pretty much monitor and supervise and guide the, um, the, the students in building a robot. And they, they don't necessarily actually, they, they absolutely do not build the robot themselves and then give it to the students. Um, so the the role of the the role of the um, mentors more like a is more like a teacher, um, and um, so essentially we had a very supportive teachers uh, in our team, and these mentors come from uh, well one of them is a teacher at our high school, and. Uh, one of them is also a uh, one of them is a parent um, of one of the students um, in our team, and the other two are just um, uh, volunteers from um, around the area who reached out to us saying that they would like to mentor our team. Um, and it's really it's we didn't really like, and um, they, this is all volunteer time for them. They do this because they enjoy you know teaching children STEM and engineering. Um, which is great for them, and that's why we're extremely grateful for their um, their support um, in our robotic endeavors. Um, we also had extremely committed students. Um, so, as you know, uh, robotics is a very time-consuming um, extracurricular activity to have. Um, you, if you're in robotics, you can expect to spend maybe around 10, 15, maybe even 20 hours of your week um, in the robotics lab building your robot. Um, and um, although that may sound like a lot, if you really enjoy robotics and you really enjoy um, STEM and engineering, then you know those, those 20 hours will actually seem extremely short because you, know, you love what you're doing and time flies when you love what you're doing. Um, we also had uh, a lot of good parental support. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the parents in our um, and were extremely supportive of our team and how they did this through was you know one mentoring um, they can mentor our team um, they also secured corporate sponsorships um, from the companies that they worked at and also they um, donated to our team um, in which uh, which their most companies actually will match your donation so we actually get double the money um, through any parent donation uh, additionally um, Parents also were extremely helpful through volunteering. Um, and this could be just be to watch us one day when a mentor wasn't available or to um, uh, bring in dinner for all of us when we're uh, working late in the lab. Um, uh, that's always, uh, always helpful. And I think one of the most important things to have to achieve success is also patience. You know, we, it took us four or five years of building robots to actually start getting better at building robots and starting to perform well. And now we know uh, five years is a long time, but um, it's it's totally worth it. Um, like, you know, you, Rome wasn't built in a day and a robotics team it certainly isn't built in a day either. Um, so we can move on. So uh, what do you learn from participating in high school robotics? Um, you learn quite a lot actually. So one, as Aaron said earlier, you learn a lot of teamwork and collaboration um, as you know, you're working with 20 to 30 other um, students in your your team to uh, accomplish a task, and that requires a um, a whole lot of uh, teamwork and collaboration among your peers. You also learn the leadership, and 
Um, this is regardless of whether you actually have a leadership position on the team or not. Um, because when, because uh, high school robotics as well, high school, everyone graduates, no one's on the team forever. You, um, once you, once you're about to leave the team, you, you have to transfer your knowledge. You have to transfer what you learned on the team to a member who will be staying on the team to a new member. And then that in and of itself is leadership because you are, you know, you're taking a younger member underneath your wing and showing them around and telling them what you know uh, so that they can continue to build robots and so that they can improve on your knowledge. And that, that is itself is leadership. So you don't have to be a captain. You don't have to be a, a lead to actually um, to, to learn leadership. Um, another thing is time management. And time management is, a, you know, extremely important in robotics, also extremely important in academic, your academic life and in, um, and in your professional life. And um, you learn time management in robotics because there are, you know, deadlines that you have to meet. Otherwise, your robot won't move at a competition or, um, you know, the programmers won't have a robot to program. And um, basically, you learn, you learn time management and project management because you you are working towards building and making something tangible to go compete um, in a tournament, and then if you if you don't do if you don't do your role, then what ends up happening is everyone on your team looks at you and say you know you didn't do your role you're you're not being you're not pulling your weight you're not being responsible on the team, um, so that may sound like peer pressure but it's you know very healthy peer pressure. Um, for you to stay active, for you to do do your work on the team, and to be an active contributor on the team, and then the most important um, thing you learn from all these is that you get a fundamental skills for industry, which is you know working after you, for working in a company after you graduate high school or college. Um, all these skills you you definitely will not learn in a classroom. And that's what's extremely important about iSchool Robotics is that you, you learn by doing, which is not something you do in the, the classroom. Um, no class will ever teach you leadership or, or time management or teamwork and collaboration as effectively as spending four years or, or, or even a one year on the robotics team will. Um, that's, that's what I found um, extremely valuable in in uh, high school robotics. I might even say that if I, if I went to high school for instead two years and spent four years in the robotics team, I'm pretty sure I would have learned probably the same amount of things just because uh, robotics taught me so much more, maybe even uh, so, so much, maybe even more than, than high school itself. All right, and then um, now a lot, there's a lot of questions about uh, if you don't do, if you don't like engineering, is there still a place for you on the team? And the answer is certainly yes, because every single team also has, every single robotics team also have, has a business sub team. And what they do is they, um, they seek, uh, they seek sponsors because, you know, obviously it takes money to build the robot. They speak, they seek corporate sponsors and they also, um, do a lot of outreach and community events, um, so what that means is basically we go out to a public space and then we, with our robot, and we um, tell members of the public uh, what our, you know, what our mission is as a robotics team so that uh, more people in our community are aware of us as a team and they can see that we're doing a positive impact for the community because uh, we are ed educating the, the youth in, in STEM and in engineering. Um, and in addition to that, you also have like web design and photography and presenting the team to the community, which basically all boils down to we're, we're running a business. You know, a robotics team anywhere in the world is pretty much just like running a small business um, where we have to, we, we're building a product and then we're selling that product to our community. Um, we're, letting, uh, we're letting our community know that, you know, we're here we're here, to, we're here to help, we're here to support our community. Um, uh, Alina, if you have anything to add if, that I missed about business? Um, no, I can expand more later if you want. Um, if there's okay. any questions. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so that is business. Um, 
definitely not as as much STEM oriented as engineering or programming, but it is there and it's certainly an option for anyone who would like to participate in a, in a robotics team, but does not necessarily want to participate in the um, engineering aspect of the team. And most importantly about robotics is that, about high school robotics is that high school robotic, robotics is not just robots. We, o we don't, robot, uh, we don't only just build robots, right? First and VEX are more important in that it's, um, it's, a, it's a community, it's a, uh, a worldwide community of people who love to do the same things, which is to build robots. And it gives to you a huge um, social and professional network that you can uh, rely on um, for the rest of your life. For example, at uh, World Championships, um, there was a huge uh, college and career fair where um, colleges and companies would go to the robotics competition and talk to the uh, young students about you know, what they want to do in the future and what college and career opportunities they should consider at being a first student. For one of my personal experiences was as I was at a robotics competition and I was just randomly approached by, um, by an Air Force recruiter, a US Air Force recruiter. And he was talking to me about what I was gonna do after high school. And he was emphasizing how um, I was a, a good candidate to join the Air Force um, because he, the Air Force really liked, uh, really wants to have you know, STEM oriented smart kids in the Air Force. Um, unfortunately for the Air Force, I am very nearsighted, so I actually can't join the Air Force, but um, it's a, it goes to show how once you are active in first and you go to these competitions, people, uh, large companies, important companies will want to talk to you. Um, uh, can you please, whoever's vandalizing my slides, please stop. I can see, I can see you do that. Um, so all these companies will, um, will want to talk to you. For example, there's a bunch of companies right here that sponsor FIRST, um, which recognize FIRST as a good, um, as a, as like a good preparer for their students. You see 3M, Apple, Google, NASA, which are all, you know, famous companies that um, will like you more if you do uh, FIRST when you apply for their jobs. Um, also, another thing is that FIRST and VEX, uh, um, will give you scholarships to college, um, which is great, um, especially if you're in need of financial aid. Um, there are colleges, there are some colleges who will even, you know, let you go to college completely free because you were an active member in, in FIRST, you know, which is awesome. Um, another great thing is that a lot of colleges recognize FIRST as a, a, huge, um, a huge extracurricular program that is, you know, very worthwhile of attention. Um, if you put on your resume or your college resume that you participated in first, um, and your, say your essays or your, um, and the rest of your resumes, uh, reflect that you were a, very, a big active participant in an, a robotics team or an FRC team or a VEX team, um, colleges will take you a lot more seriously because they see that you are committed to a team or you're committed to a organization and that you've learned a lot from this organization so um yeah in summary first and vex gives you a lot of uh college and career opportunities that that um not a lot other not a lot of other high school um uh organizations could give you and that is a, a very special thing about high school <laughs>